10 and a half. Talk about style points versus wins. 10 and a half is the number that came down according to a number of services. I don't know. Did you guys see any other number besides 10 and a half? I saw that all over the place in terms of Ohio State's over under win total, everybody, for 2022, Tony. That's the one I always saw, and that feels – I mean, you're asking Ohio State to lose two regular season games, which they don't do a lot of, so I would feel pretty good about taking – the over on that one, especially in a season where they have eight home games and four road games and the home games uh, involve Michigan. So they don't have to go to Michigan. So I would feel good about taking the over on that 10 and a half. I agree. I think over 10 and a half makes sense. Probably double digit favorite in almost every game this year, particularly with all the key games at home. I mean, maybe Penn State would be under 10 points. I don't know, but uh, probably depends on how Penn State gets off to the start of the season and what they're looking like in mid-October. But uh, yeah, I I think uh, 10 and a half, uh, I don't want to say it's a lock, but uh, I'd say it looks pretty good that Ohio State would be over the total on that. I, I don't disagree. There's not much else I can say there without belaboring the point. Ten and a half seems to be pretty fair. It's going to be hard pressed to find a, a, a lot of times where Ohio State under its current platinum age that's in is going to drop two regular season games. And no whiteout helps, I think. Not that Ohio State has a lot of difficulty there, but it is tough. It's not a whiteout. Yeah, so it, with the big noon kickoff, that I think that, that – in theory, it helps Ohio State rather than have to, having to deal with the whiteout at night. They win the whiteouts. They're just close. They just make it scary. Right. It's not, yeah, it's uh, it's, just, it's never really easy. And the whiteouts that, are, yeah. Instead of a 10 point win, it's an opportunity for James Franklin to blow a two touchdown lead. It's a lot like the night atmosphere at LSU, the, the night games there, which are completely overblown in terms of uh, favoring LSU. And it's, kind of overrated, but still, you don't want to play there at night. And then they kick the ball off. <laughs> Let's consider this angle on it as well. Um, so I was never an over-under guy. I thought they were interesting, but I never like kept track of my record or anything like that. Well, if anyone here is into wagering to some degree, I'm not some expert by any stretch, but negative 110 is kind of that betting line against the spread if you have even money on both sides. And most of the games, if you go week to week, the line is going to show minus 110 on both sides, meaning you have to lay down $110 to win 100 back. So I thought I saw 10 and a half with Ohio State, Georgia, and Alabama. And I thought, well, that would be a pretty good play. You take all three of them as a collection if you, if you hit on two out of three. But they've got those odds swayed so far in the opposite direction. Two of them are at minus 205. I think it's Georgia and Ohio State are at minus 205, and Bama's at 190. So you basically are going to break even if you hit two out of three. So you get to win all three. So forget that. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's that kind of um, defeats the the concept of you know I, picking I'm one side or the other. I'm it. always confused on this. Does this go through the end of – Week 12, the regular season, does this include the conference championship game? Does it include the bowl or the playoff? Like what? Scheduled games, 12 games for everyone. Scheduled games, 12 games. Okay, so after 12 games, you either have a ticket you can cash or you don't. Okay. Or you have confetti. Or you have confetti. Had a lot of confetti over the years, I can tell you that. I've, I've seen a lot of Kino confetti. Yeah. <laughs> no good. 